We begin with a new wave of Israeli attacks after the deadliest day so far in the latest conflict between Israel and Hamas. Israeli forces continued to hammer Gaza overnight, and there's no end in sight. These attacks come after at least 42 people were killed there yesterday, including children. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he wants Hamas to pay a heavy price for firing thousands of rockets into Israel, and he says he grieves for all civilians who died. MTS Tayyip is in East Jerusalem, where the violence flared up more than a week ago. MTS, good morning. Glad everyone, good morning. Yeah, you're right. I'm here in East Jerusalem, and you can see behind me these huge concrete barricades which Israeli police have set up. And really what they do is they serve to sever Palestinian neighborhoods from each other, all of which, of course, really just keeps these tensions really inflamed as Israel continues to bomb Gaza. Overnight, dozens of Israeli airstrikes pounded the Gaza Strip as fighter jets continue to smash neighborhoods, although Israel insists they are surgical strikes on Hamas targets. Six-year-old Susie is pulled from the rubble of what was her home after being trapped for seven hours. Her mother and four siblings were all killed in the Israeli strike. Riyad Ashkuntana is her father. <laughs> He says, I was filled with all the anger of the universe, but when I heard that one of my daughters was alive, I thank God. The evisceration of some of Gaza's tallest tower blocks by Israeli fighter jets have been caught on live television. Like this 12-story building, which housed foreign media, including the Associated Press. Journalists were warned to leave ahead of the strike that's being called an assault on press freedom. What is Speaking to CBS's um, Face the Nation, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu defended the attack. Uh, an intelligence office for the Palestinian terrorist organization housed in that building that plots and organizes the terror attacks against Israeli civilians. So it's a perfectly legitimate target. Despite the enormous devastation across Gaza, Hamas is continuing its rocket campaign against Israel, causing damage like this in the southern Israeli town of Ashkelon. While in East Jerusalem, where this all began, protesters took to the streets this weekend to commemorate Nakba Day, or the catastrophe, when hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were displaced from the Holy City and other areas decades ago. A trauma Jad Hamad says he's reliving. He's one of six Palestinian families in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood facing expulsion from their homes by Jewish settlers. With the Nakba protest, this must feel very, very acute. Yeah, exactly. It's very, very hard because we, uh, we had the feeling before and they are just waking it up, you know, to make, it us, uh, to make it very, very hard to us to live in here. Are you afraid you're going to be evicted? Of course. I have kids. I don't know where to go with them. Now, these possible evictions is really one of the main reasons why we've seen this latest round of violence, violence which a week later is only likely to continue. Gail. Heartbreaking pictures of civilian casualties. Very difficult. Thank you very much, MTS.